Good afternoon from Two Happy Children Farm. I'm in the barn for now. It's a little windy outside. I'm doing a follow-up on my uh, yellow and green soybean fields. And uh, it's about 10 days later since I took the initial video. And what we were looking at is a yellow streaking in the beans uh, right next to a streak that's green and it had a repeating pattern. So if you remember that video I did two things. I did a soil test and I did a tissue test of uh, that area. So I got the results back. First we'll go over the um, soil test. This is Midwest Labs soil test. Um, you can take a screenshot of this and look at it. But essentially the yellow is the second line and um, it's showing some differences again, uh, in the soil. Um, this is only about 30 feet uh, away from each other. Um, some of the bigger differences were in the micros where the zinc and the manganese were 40% different. Um, up here you will notice the calcium is higher in the yellow beans. Um, I couldn't really see a big difference. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it was the zinc. So from getting looking at this, this is all I could really figure out. But then I was looking at um, some of these ratios here in the base saturation level, and um, my percent K, which is how much potassium is available, is low on both samples. I'd like it to be around four percent. But the calcium on the on the yellow beans is 10% higher. So there's more calcium in that soil. pH is also higher. That's a logarithmic scale, so it's six, six times higher, I believe it is. If it was a seven, it'd be 10 times higher. So even though it says 0 0.6, that's quite a bit of difference. The other step I took was we did a soil test on my 200 bushel corn crop. This line item is ATH1, and these values are pretty much correlating to the green strip as well. The difference being that the zinc was low on this um, sample, whereas it's high on the green strip. So at this point I'm throwing zinc out as the cause, I'm throwing manganese out as the cause. Um, all these other variables that are about identical I'm throwing out. So what I notice now is, looking at the base saturation, the amount of potassium is the same in this strip as well as in the green strip. The amount of calcium is in the 70% range on this strip and the green strip. So it's leaving the outlying yellow strip had a lot higher calcium. So whatever that means. Um, the outlier strip right now is showing higher calcium levels as well as higher soil pH. So uh, I can't really yet explain why I have yellow strips, why it's so perfect and uniform. I can't trace it back to a field operation yet. Uh, the final thing I did was take plant tissue test from uh, all three spots, yellow, green, and ATH1 is um, where I previously hit about 180 bushels on my corn crop. Uh, really the levels are pretty good on all the micronutrients, uh, which is surprising. All the zinc, copper, boron are really good. The yellow strip is a little low on iron, but if we look at macronutrients, you'll notice right away that nitrogen is low and it's lowest on the yellow strip. So it's comforting to find out that nitrogen is what's making the plants green or yellow and we've proved it here. But the other thing you'll notice is the potassium on the yellow strip is also the lowest. So what I think is happening is since um, that strip has the highest amount of calcium of the three and even though it has this a nice amount of parts per million of potassium available. 
um, it's not becoming available because the calcium is so high in that strip. So what I'm planning to do going forward to fix this field is we're going to be applying a pretty good dose of potassium and um, probably close to 600 pounds, five to 600 pounds actual K per acre. And we'll bring that up to closer to 450 parts per million on my soil test and get that up to 3% and the base saturation. So I don't have any firm uh, answers on why that strip was actually yellow. Uh, mechanically, um, it might have happened way before I had the farm. Um, they might have stripped some of that ground off for topsoil sales. Um, they might have uh, banked it up for erosion. Um, I'm not sure. So we're going to go out to the field and we're going to look at nodulations and see if there's anything else physically we can see out there like drainage. So we're out here in the field now and I'm uh, digging a couple of plants. This is a plant from the greener strip and uh, looking at the roots there's some nodulation there maybe six of them. They're still kind of pink on the inside so they're still doing some work. And then this is a plant from the yellower strip. Still a lot of pods on there. And it has, uh, I'd say, a lot better nodulation. But uh, the yellow strip tested a lot lower for nitrogen and potassium. Um, so there could have been some carryover nitrogen that's moving this part of the field along as well. So it might have been a good fortune where uh, this past spring I put out the nitrogen the way I did. Um, it might be that this darker green area had just a little bit more leftover nitrate to work with. And the lighter green was relying on the plants more. So I've heard you don't get a lot of nodules if you're relying on soil nitrogen for a while. Um, and this plant is giving us a lot of nodules, but it's still not getting enough nitrogen and like yellow. So maybe that, that's accounting for the, the width of the strips, was I was pre-applying or had carryover nitrogen from, from last year's crop. Um, but it's also really curious that the lighter green ones soil test had a lot higher calcium and pH and that's just within 30 feet or so. Looking at the topography this is kind of a flat spot here and then it rolls into like a bowl there. So the lighter green area could be part that's uh, also seen more runoff over the years. That kind of looks like a gully there or a shallow area there. It just seems like it's coincidence that it's such a uniform amount of rows every time. It's 12 rows every time. But this is definitely not my flattest part of the field. So I think kind of got lucky um, by not pulling a trigger and putting my fertilizer budget up to 200 bushels on this part of the field. Um, I put out less nitrogen because over the years I've been seeing this part underperforming so I put out what I thought would give me 140 bushels and that turned out we went into a nitrogen deficiency on the corn which is when I first flagged this and then soybeans. That's really good. It answers my questions on why this part of the field has been struggling and I can work on my nutrition levels, especially potassium, which will be a lot cheaper than uh, spending two pounds of nitrogen per year to make a bushel of corn. So thanks for watching. Hope you uh, got something out of this. Um, it's kind of unique that you don't get a 
trying to get a closure on what happens out in your field. So 